Hello and welcome to this video on milling your own grains to brew beer. Milling is a preparatory stage that when done right sets you up to brew successfully. Done wrong, it sets you up for a lesson in many different elements of fermentation and the difficulties in even getting to that point. For now, this video will be limited to whole grains and not malt. You do need to keep that distinction in mind. Malt is the primary fermentable in most beers, but many will simply buy in a pre-made malted product. To give it its due justice, it will have a dedicated video. The first benefit of milling is the removal of the husk. The husk is a protein-rich protective layer which protects the inner part of the grain called the endosperm. This husk is important for latter stages of beer production. It acts as a filter and fibre-rich component. The husk clots to a point which keeps the whole wort flowing when it is sparged. The husk prevents the grain bed in that process from completely settling, which means water continues to flow through it. This is essential to extract sugar. The more finely shredded husk can actually cause astringent flavours due to the release of certain tannins. As was described in the rice milling for sake production video, the first consideration beyond the purpose of milling is size. The finer a mill, the more readily it will break down releasing saccharides. This is important when the primary reason behind milling is allowing the breakdown of complex grains into usable saccharide parts. The problem is going too far. As with most grains, when you mill them to a very fine point, it becomes a flour. Something like that used in the baking of bread and similar products. The grains need to be a size that is too large to become a dough. There is a finer balance between something that is too big and something that is too small. You want to get that balance just right, or it becomes a trade-off between efficiency of the extraction, which leads to an altered fermentation and the time taken to prepare the grains. A coarse grind will allow for the free flow of water. This is good for loutering, but it does reduce the efficiency of the enzymes that break down the saccharides. It is important that most of the endosperm is broken up. Not doing this will lead to large chunky sections that as said are great for fluid flow, but they are terrible for the enzymes because the large surface area makes it hard to get to all of the saccharides. This leads to a slow, if not stagnated, conversion from starch into a sugar. This is why size is important. The enzymes secreted by the alluron layer should break down the starch regions. In order to get this to happen, you want to aim for something between 0.9 mm and 1.3 mm, or 1 tenth to 1 seventh of the original grain size. This can be made more or less depending on how much flour is generated how much material is wasted, and how effective it is for what you're trying to achieve. While you are milling everything, try to make it happen in one pass. Repeated milling can damage the husk and heat the grain. Both are bad to your final product. This process should create a crushed grain that is a combination of shredded husk and more finely ground endosperm. One trick to achieve these two products is to wet the grain slightly before milling. This is useful in making the husk more flexible. It should only be used for grain that will be milled and used immediately. For this purpose, we used a very basic mill that is powered by a drill. 
This drives the crank and turns the roller. In an ideal world, you would use a similar mechanism of which there are several ideal and dedicated options. In practice, you may not have this sort of device to begin with, and a temporary fix is to use a blender, or even something more manual. Some final considerations. Try to mill outside, as you will produce a lot of dust. Avoid confined spaces, or anywhere that could lead to a fire as the flour produced can be quite explosive and is not good to be breathed in. Milling is a process of adapting your equipment on the go until you find the right grind. An alternative to trial and error is to use rice at first and then put your beer ingredients through. And this will allow you to select the right size grind and get the desired result without as much waste. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it interesting, consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. Please post any comments, questions, or suggestions below.